Hi, I'm Apostle Catherine. Welcome to another episode of Revival Is Now. Lately on this program, you've been learning the power of your words and that it is so important to only speak life and never death. Not only because this is what is pleasing to God, but also whenever you're speaking words of death, it is literally opening up the door to the devil where this weapon formed against you could turn into a yoke, could turn into bondage. Today, you will learn how to be free of those yokes that have come in because of the word spoken or other reasons. Jesus has come to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus has so much compassion on us. He doesn't care what you've done in your past. He just wants you to be free. So he's completely forgiving you of the careless words you've spoken, of the words of death you've spoken, of the times you've even partnered with the enemy with your words. He's forgiven you. It's, it's done. As soon as you turn to him, repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I've said in the past. Forgive me. I don't want to do that anymore. I only want to speak words that please you. I always want to keep the door shut to the devil. So Jesus now wants you free. Today you will be free. Jesus has returned the authority to you. You now have free will to choose God's portion for your life or the devil's portion for your life. The reason for bondage is because you have used your free will, your authority, and basically in the spiritual realm said to the devil, I accept your portion. I accept bondage. You didn't with your mind say that, but with the action of speaking death, with the action of opening up the door to the devil, with your words, it's the action of saying, I accept the bondage. In this revival, God is restoring his power to heal and deliver. And he's also restoring revelation of how to access that power of how to see healing and deliverance happen. In the Acts Church, they were seeing mighty miracles. It, it would say in the Acts Church that everybody was healed and delivered. That reveals to us that not only did they have the power of God, but they had revelation of how to see this deliverance and healing take place on such a massive scale where everyone was healed. So in this revival, God is restoring revelation of how to see freedom take place. So he's releasing his anointing and he's releasing revelation of how to walk in God's power, of how to receive God's power to bring healing and freedom. So one of these revelations is renouncing to bring about freedom. Renouncing means to abandon something that you once claimed as your own. So you might have claimed the devil's portion as your own. You might have claimed sickness as your own. The action of accepting a diagnosis, the action of speaking aloud, I have this sickness. That is the action of claiming it because the Bible says by his stripes you are healed. We are called to walk in authority. We are called to recognize that the devil's a liar and he can bring the lies in the forms of symptoms and the forms of pain. These are weapons, but they're not real unless we allow them to be. So we're called to say sickness go, pain go. I reject the diagnosis. I reject every word curse. I am healed by Jesus' stripes. That's generally, that's an example of how we are supposed to walk as children of God who walk in authority. So when you're not doing that, that's the action of claiming the devil's portion. On the last episode, I shared an example of how words of death were spoken over this gentleman. He's an adult male now, but when he was a child, words of death were spoken over him from different family members. One family member called him stupid. One family member was mad at him one time, frustrated, and he just said, you're gonna turn out like your uncle, and his uncle um, had passed away from drugs and alcohol addiction. He confessed these things. Now, the reason he confessed these things was because he identified when those words of death were spoken over him, they affected him. And something changed for the bad since that day. What happens when you don't have revelation that we are in a spiritual war and the way the devil lies most of the time is through people, through people's words, through people near you, close to you in your life. This is the devil's scheme to speak his 
portion over you, to speak identities opposite of Christ over you, to speak what the devil wants you to think about yourself over you. So the devil wants you to think you're stupid. The devil wants you to think that you're going to die early. You're going to be an addict like your relatives. The devil wants you to believe those lies because as a man thinks, so he is, the Bible says. As a woman or man thinks, so he is. If you believe this, whatever you believe in becomes your truth and it manifests your belief. That's the power of faith that works in the good and the bad. So many people are so unaware to the devil's schemes of how he works, especially young children. And so what happens is the world's way, if people speak things to you, and especially if they speak it multiple times or other people speak the same things again and again, the world's way is to believe that it must be true. You know, why would a person say that over and over again? Why would a tons of people be saying the same thing over? And on top of that, why do I have those thoughts as well? Agreeing with those words. Oh, must be true. I must be stupid. I must not be pretty. I must not be skinny enough. I must be awkward. I must not have what it takes, etc. The devil strategically feeds the specific words towards a person in their mind and giving the same idea to other people for them to speak it at that person. So that person is flooded with the same lie again and again and again and again. And without the spiritual knowledge, they will just think, oh, must be truth. This is the simple answer of why people believe they were born with a sexual attraction to the same sex. And that's just how they are. It all came from lies of the devil. Usually people who are battling with homosexual desires, one of two or both of these things have happened. One, they were sexually abused as a child many times. And since that day, sometimes manifesting later in life, the same sex attraction and thoughts came. Or number two, the person had looks, qualities, and traits that society calls feminine. So young children at a young age can seem feminine, more feminine to other people and then these people can start to speak over them, you're gay. This is who you are, this is who you are. And the words are so powerful. So if you don't have the spiritual knowledge, you will just take whatever the words are that come at you as your truth. And that is the action of agreeing with the enemy's portion for your life and that becoming a yoke, becoming a stronghold. So people have demonic yokes of identity that is not of Christ. These demonic yokes going against the identity of Christ come from believing lies of the devil many times coming through words of people. And so what happens is the devil makes a strategic attack. The abuse happens so he knows exactly where to attack you. He, that abuse happens so he's going to flood you with unworthiness thoughts, with shame thoughts. If someone was sexually abused as a child, the devil knows exactly what to do. His strategy is to flood that child with homosexual thoughts and other people in his life to begin speaking that over him. And as they speak it over the person and that person believes it more and more, they evolve into somebody different. They literally change. So it's like the enemy is literally transforming this person into what the devil wants him or her to be. If you begin to have these lies circle in your mind, thoughts against your identity, and, and then other people are speaking them at you, it is very important you are aware, oh, these are lies and I reject these lies. These are not truth at all. I reject them and I'm never gonna speak them out loud. I'm never gonna agree with them. They are lies. These words of death coming from other people, these, at, at this stage, it's weapons formed against you. And the Bible says the weapons formed against you, sh weapons may form against you, but they shall not prosper. But that is speaking of when you actually walk in your authority in Christ, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So the devil comes with these weapons, but you have to submit to God and resist the devil, and then he must flee. That's when those weapons aren't going to prosper. But weapons have prospered in many people's lives in the forms of yokes, people not doing anything, just letting the weapons come, not doing anything, saying, oh, oh, I guess this is my portion accepting devil's will becomes 
yokes bondage now. There's different ways that demonic spirits yokes come in a person, but one of the biggest ways is by the word because your word carries life or death and the word is how you're executing authority. So you are literally many times executing your authority in the wrong ways. Like we're given free will when you're agreeing with the devil's lies, you're, you're using your authority and saying, okay, yeah, I accept this. Yep. This is my portion. Yep. This is who I am. Yep. This identity, this false identity, this not of Christ is who I am. Oh, this is a diagnosis for me. Okay. Yep. This is what I have. Okay. We'll go to the doctor. We'll do things the world's way, but you have done nothing spiritually to stop this spiritual demonic attack. You've accepted it spiritually and now you're trying to fix things physically, but you have to deal with it spiritually. If you, you can try to fix things physically all you want, but if you never did anything about the spiritual attack, the spiritual root, it's staying there until you take action. This is what we're learning today, how to take action now. So most demonic yokes have come by a person using their authority the wrong way and allowing the devil's portion to come in their life, agreeing with the devil's lies, speaking it aloud. So now you're going to learn how to be free of those demonic yokes. So this revelation that God has released of renouncing means to abandon something you once claimed as your own. So you once claimed things as your own. You once claimed devil's lies, devil's portion, devil's identity as your own. So now you need to, because you're given authority, you need to do something. You need to do an action. You need to abandon what you've claimed as your own. And remember the powers in your words. So for the most part, these things come in through your words, accepting them in some way. Now we need to do the reverse. We need to take back what we spoke. You need to use your authority and say, I know that I once allowed the devil's portion in my life, but I'm taking a stand today, as the Bible says, stand firm against all strategies of the devil. I'm standing firm today. I'm taking a stand today. For once, I'm using my authority in Christ how I'm supposed to. The devil has no power. I have power over the devil. So now, I'm using my authority and kicking the devil out, kicking those demons out. I'm using my authority and saying, I don't want the devil's will anymore in my life. I don't want his portion anymore. I don't want sickness. I don't want bondage. I don't want his lies. I want God's will. So I reject lack, sickness, oppression. I accept and I declare abundant life. By his stripes, I'm healed. Freedom, healing, abundance in every area is mine. I speak it now. This is what I want. That's what renouncing is to, to, to explain it, to summarize it. Many believers publicly confess their sins and disclose their secrets. The power of God caused the word to spread and the people were greatly impacted. Right before this, it speaks about how Apostle Paul was doing such extraordinary miracles and everybody was being healed. So then here goes on to say that many believers publicly confessed their sins and disclosed their secrets. They were not just confessing their secrets just to like get things off their chest, just to like become closer, you know, get more intimate as a family. That's not the purpose of why they were confessing publicly their sins and disclosing their secrets. The reason was, was because this was a key that unlocked their deliverance. As they were confessing their sins and disclosing their secrets publicly, they were being set free. Renouncing, doing what they are doing, is one of the big keys that unlocks freedom for people who are bound. The reason being is because You've used your authority in the wrong way for the most part. It doesn't always happen this way. Sometimes it's other people using, taking their authority on you, like past generations. Maybe they were involved in witchcraft, for example, or abuse happened to you as a child. That wasn't you opening the door. But most of the time it does result in a flood of demonic lies in your head that you eventually end up speaking unless the person can receive the spiritual knowledge immediately the moment they're abused, for example, and can reject all of those lies immediately. So you 
once spoke the devil's portion, the devil's will in certain areas. Now you need to speak. The demons are hanging on because they have legal rights because of words you spoke, because of doors you've opened. What makes them to lose their legal right, like lose their grip, is when you renounce. It is two main keys that unlocks freedom for people. Anointing, which is the power of God, and renouncing. You need to be a serious child of God, a serious warrior. Like, I'm ready to take my stand against the devil, to enter in this fight, to fight the good fight of faith. This is the only way you can survive. You cannot be this civilian, like, lazy, wimpy, just like believer in Jesus who does nothing and just wants pe people to free you and that's just it. You need to decide, I want to serve God. God is calling me to serve him by being a warrior, by fighting the good fight of faith, by doing what his word says, by resisting the devil, by following his commands, taking them so seriously, being so aware in the spiritual realm, careful to not open up doors to the devil, but to follow God's every word and please him. This inheritance that he's provided for you on the cross, that comes when you give your life to Jesus, not just, not just say, Jesus is my Lord and live your life however. That inheritance that Jesus has provided for you, that's for children of God. Children of God, not people who call themselves Christians, but real children of God who are surrendered. So this inheritance of freedom is yours. Yes, freedom is yours. But if you're serious about being a real child of God, it's yours. So right now, it's time to be free from words of death that have caused you to be in bondage. Words of death word curses that have come to you from other people and also that you've spoken yourself. It's important that you seek God and ask him, Lord, show me all these areas that I've spoken death over myself, over my life, over other people. Um, show me areas that people spoke death over me. Man, I've been having struggles with my identity for a while. Show me, Lord, words that were spoken that made me think so strongly that it was the truth. Remind me, Lord, reveal to me these things. Once you surrender to God, seek Him in this way, God will start to remind you, reveal things to you. It's important for you to identify these areas where those words of death came in, where it began, because when you renounce, it's important to not only renounce the bondage. So like, I renounce anxiety, I renounce depression, I renounce having desires and thoughts that I don't wanna have not only renouncing that, but also it's important to renounce the open doors, the specific areas where that demonic oppression came in. This is part of the keys that are unlocking your freedom, that's unlocking those chains. As you seek God, He will reveal these things to you. There's different kinds of words of death that can bring bondage. One of them is people speaking death over you. And from now on, by the way, Whenever anybody speaks any kind of word of death over to you, go into the spiritual realm immediately. Renew your mind with the fact that 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 they spoke is a lie. The truth. This is your truth of who you are in Christ. Go in the word of God where it speaks about your identity, where it speaks who you are, how God sees you, and remind yourself, this is who I am. I am chosen, I'm a beloved, I'm pure, I'm righteousness, I'm clean in God's eyes. Speak these things and you can say aloud, I reject those words of death those they spoke over me and this is my truth, this is who I am. Meditate on the word of God and speak it aloud. And that's how you can have victory and how those weapons formed against you will not prosper. If you have children, this is very important. Any, you need to be so serious now in the spiritual realm with your kids. If your children ever report to you, if somebody called them something at school, perhaps, talk with them and, I mean, they can understand things in the spiritual realm. Be real with them and, and share, like, what I'm teaching you today. Like, that word that someone spoke, that was a lie. That was the enemy. He lied. It's not the truth. And so we're going to reject that right now. This is who you are. This is the truth of who you are. You're beautiful. You're smart. You're perfectly made by God. You're loved. You're accepted. You're lovable. Speak these things over them and then you can just lead them to even say out loud, I reject 
that word curse that was spoken over me and you can have them speak it aloud. This is who I am in Christ. The gentleman in the video that I shared last in last week's episode that was delivered, he was renouncing family members speaking over him that he was stupid. And so he renounced that and he says, I renounce stupidity. I'm not stupid. I renounce being called stupid. I am smart. And as he renounced these things, demons were literally saying out of him, no, no, don't. Because they knew that was the key for him to be free. They knew that they were losing their legal access as soon as, as he renounced these things. It's very powerful. It's evidence that this is true. This is real. There's such power in renouncing. And renouncing specifically, like not just saying I renounce word curses, but specifically I renounce my dad calling me stupid, like specifically. Um, and he was set free so powerfully after he renounced those things. And he came back this Sunday and testified how his life is so different after God freed him. Spend time seeking God over the areas of words of death you've spoken over yourself. Even when you were young till now, what are the words that you've spoken? Maybe several times too. And what are the things you believed about yourself that are not of God? and renounce those specifically as God shows you. There's certain word curses that can be even stronger that you speak if you are making covenants. Covenants are very powerful, both in the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. It's like extra powerful when you make a covenant rather than just like speaking a word. It's like extra power, it's a promise. It's, it's like locking you into something in an agreement. It's like locking you into an agreement. So there's one big covenant that many people speak and that's I want to die or some variation. That's a covenant made with a demon of suicide or a demon of death. So it's very important that you don't, if you struggle with suicidal thoughts and you've spoken, I want to die, it's important that you not only renounce, I, ren uh, I renounce suicidal thoughts, but that you renounce specifically the words you spoke. I renounce um, saying I want to die. When you do that, the covenant's broken. When I've ministered, I've seen Many people renounce suicide, but the demons don't go. And then I'll ask them, have you said, I want to die? They said yes, and they renounced that. And as soon as they renounced it, they were immediately set free. So this is really important to renounce those covenants. Look back on what kind of other covenants you could have made that were demonic, that were not of God, were not led by the Holy Spirit. There's one example of a woman, Holy Spirit led me to ask her, revealed to me prophetically this key of her freedom was uh, some covenant she made and she needed to renounce that. So I asked her if there was any covenant she knew of. She was probably in her 30s or so and she, all of a sudden it came to her, like God just spoke it to her. You could tell like this, it was amazing that she even remembered this. It was God. Um, she had made a blood pact, like took blood with another person and did some sort of covenant together. Like they thought it was innocent children just doing something, but it was not Holy Spirit led. And when you are exchanging blood like that, that's not something that God asks us to do. And so even though it can be harmless and innocent, it's led by, it can be led by the enemy for some sort of covenant for an open door for demons to come in. And so she renounced that. And as she renounced that, she was set free. So if you've ever been part of any kind of cult, any group that was not really led by the Holy Spirit, even if it was Christian, maybe there is like a demonic soul tie to a Christian friend or ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend or group that looking back, you really feel it wasn't really led by the Holy Spirit, even if it was in the, they called themselves Christians, for example, and you made promises maybe renounce those things, renounce those demonic soul ties, renounce packs, cov any kind of covenant that was not led by the Holy Spirit. Another way that demons can come in is with children, they can come in as voices in their heads and they can, not, they can sound not like evil, like demons obviously, like obvious demons, but they can come and sound like loving. And so this happens sometimes where demons are speaking pretending to be an imaginary friend and they will get children to make promises like promise that you'll let me stay here forever in your head or something I'll always be here for you you'll never be lonely you'll I'll always keep you safe they could say stuff I've, I've seen this when I minister people confess this that this happened when they were a child and they renounce and they're free so if that ever happened to you if you had some sort of imaginary friend voices in your head that you spoke that you agreed with renounce those. So as I was speaking, I know God has revealed to you some things you need to renounce. So you can right now speak these things. You can begin to renounce them right now. Renounce those words that were spoken. 
renounce those open doors of the devil. I break every word curse off of you. I break every generational curse off of you now. And I detach you from what you've renounced. I detach you from all of those words of death, all those spirits that came in through those words. And on three, every demonic spirit attached to what you've renounced, to those words, all must leave in Jesus' name. One, two, three, out now. Thank you, Jesus. I speak complete freedom over you. I declare the identity of Christ over you. I declare abundant life is your portion. And I declare now that those past thoughts in your mind that would just speak over you against your identity, that they would just come in your thoughts, they would come in your dreams. I declare them to go forever now. I declare you are a new creation. You are the righteousness of God. You are pure. And today is a new beginning. In Jesus' name, amen. I was molested as a, a kid twice from two different people. I was confused coming up. And I lived a life, even as an adult, even now I struggle. Uh, and I want to renounce lust, bisexuality, homosexuality. So these are some of the things that I've been holding for years and years and years. I didn't want to publicly say that. God is freeing you right now and he's so proud of you and I detach you from all you have renounced now on three every spirit attached every spirit of infirmity every spirit of death every disease every spirit attacking his identity in Christ giving him thoughts and desires he doesn't want to have almost go in Jesus name one two three Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Revival Is Now. Remember to watch over your words and speak life only. Revival is now. Revival is now. Your kingdom is here. We will walk in your victory. Revival is now. Your kingdom is here. Let your glory be revealed. Revival is now. Your kingdom is